Hello and welcome to another episode of the Golden Hour Podcast. I'm your host, David Altizer, with... Connor McCaskill. And we are actually in person, if you're watching the video, because I am in Connor's apartment, sitting on his couch, in person. Wow. We're shooting on the Lumix cameras. Yay. We have three of them. We haven't done this in a while. Well, the Lumix thing we've never done, but just sitting in person, we yeah. haven't done that in a while. I think there's something to it. There's something to being physically with each other. Yeah, present. That makes everything more complicated. It, oh my gosh, it took so long to set all this stuff up. Um, my living room is a disaster. It's a lot easier to just turn on a camera and go, all right, you live? Yep, send me the link, cool. Yeah. And then we, hit, we go. <laughs> um, but the in-person's fun. I like, I like being in person. So yeah. maybe one day we'll have uh, money for an office. Yeah, that would be really nice. Somewhere in the middle of our two locations, that'd be great. Yeah. So we have a couple of topics today, a couple of rumors going on, a lot of rumors, actually, some interesting cameras coming from multiple uh, different camera manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And sitting on your little table here is a camera that we are going to talk about today. This is, what is it, Connor? That's the Canon PowerShot V10. So I guess there was nine versions before this one. I'm not really sure. Um, it's actually the first version. <laughs> yeah. So Canon, you know, they've had the PowerShot brand for a while. So I think they're just playing off of that to try to make this thing more popular. I think a better name would have been the Pocket Shot. Ooh, I um, like that. Because I will say that, you know, just a quick little tidbit on it. I, I put it in my pocket and I've forgotten it's there because it is so small. Wow. Uh, which is great. So Pocket Shot, it could have come up, they could have been creative, is what I'm saying. Um, but they weren't. Now, hear us out. I know if you know what this camera is, you might be thinking, Dave, Connor. I'm a professional. <laughs> I don't want this stupid little camera. Right. Well, here's out. We have some thoughts. Connor has used it and done some reviewing. Um, mm -hmm. You will probably be seeing a review soon on his channel, if not already available when this podcast is live. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, but let's begin with some rumors. Yeah. I don't think that's the right sound effect. Let's. So let's move on to some. camera rumors that's a better that was a good one <laughs> so number one is from our favorite camera company ever sony <laughs> everybody loves sony so apparently in the next week or so uh we will be seeing more and more rumors of this camera the a6700 which that the aps-c line from sony has needed a refresh in a while i think the a6600 goes back to 2019 yeah 2019 and yeah. Then you and i went to catalina with the a6400 geez that was forever ago yeah 6600 it was the montana thing actually yeah and you got to go with armando and do all that which right. was super cool so yeah we don't really have any rumors <laughs> of the features necessarily it's you know a new uh, aps-c sensor body i'm hoping that this means that we're going to be seeing a new actual sensor for the first time um They've been using the same APS-C sensor yeah. since the A6300, which dates all the way back to like 2015 or something. So a new actual sensor, maybe the sensor from the ZV or, or what is the it? The ZVE-1? No, no, no. The, um, the FX30. Oh, yeah. That would be a great... Oh, the FX30 sensor is awesome. Yeah, too. that's a new APS-C sensor. Yeah, so that would be would actually, really awesome. That'd be a cool crossover to have that now in a cheaper body that's also more of a stills camera because the FX30 is a video camera. It doesn't have a mechanical shutter. doesn't have an EVF. Right, yeah. doesn't have... Does it have IBIS? It does, I think, yeah. It does. Um, Zach actually has the FX30, and he's been using it. Um, he's, he bought it as a B camera, and he said it's become his A camera. Wow. He's liking it so much. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah, the FX30 camera and the sensor and that thing is great. So that'd be really cool to see come to the A6700. What's wonderful about the APS-C line from Sony is there's some really great APS-C lenses available from both Sigma and Sony. Mm. One of my favorites is this teeny tiny little 18 to 50 f2.8. I mean, look at this image here. If you're watching the video, the guy holding it, it is teeny tiny and you're getting a great little focal, focal length range with this yeah. at a constant f2.8. So there's a lot of really great little compact lenses um, the Sigma Primes, you can get the f1.4. So that actually is the lens we were using on his FX30, the 16 1.4. Uh, and it was great. It was a great little lens. And it was so small. It was yeah. just, yeah. Uh, the FX30 is pretty cool. I, I, I've i considered picking one up, actually. Really? Yeah. Just because I, I do want to have my hands in all the little brands. So yeah. 
Um, I was trying to figure out what Sony camera to get, but who knows? Maybe it'll be this A6700 instead. Indeed. And then there's also some rumors of future Sony cameras like the A7C Mark II, but we don't really have any specs on that or information yet Yeah. at the moment. Supposedly they have four cameras rumored to come out, but again, they're all so far away that I'm not sure they're worth talking about quite, quite yet. Now, the next rumor, we don't have any information on it other than this leak, Right. Um, but I want to mention it because I find it really fascinating and kind of interesting and gets my gears turned. Black Magic is rumored to be in the L Mount Alliance now with yeah. Panasonic, Sigma, and Leica, which means we'll be seeing a cine a cine camera, potentially full frame cine camera as well, with the Leica L Mount from Black Magic. So I think maybe one of the reasons why we haven't seen um, like a, a Black Magic camera like the Pocket 4K or 6K in a while is probably because they were dealing with this. They were trying to figure out because I think the last one they did was the 6K EF, right? Mm-hmm. And the, EF, pro, the Pro was right. the most recent with the built-in NDs. Yeah, and they, you know, the EF mount it, it, it's it's still a viable mount, but it's not like a it's kind of a dead mount when it comes to new stuff and new lenses. So they were probably trying to decide. It's like, well, what do we do? Do we go? E mount, or do we go mm-hmm. L mount, or do we go RF mount? Maybe RF mount was probably more on the table since they did Canon EF. Yeah. But it's interesting they chose L mount, which I think is actually pretty awesome, being that we're shooting on all Lumix cameras <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've already talked about how much we love the little primes for the Leica L mount system with the Panasonics. In fact, all three of the cameras that we're shooting on right now are the S5 II or the 2X mm-hmm. using the L uh, little prime lenses. We have the 85s on the side shots and then we got the 35. They're all constant 1.8. It just makes sense. Like Black Magic knows that Panasonic kind of shares similar interests in the cinema hybrid world. Mm -hmm. And so all these lenses are perfect for gimbal use, which means, you know, it'll pair beautifully with the black magic. Right. If they went RF and you had to buy RF glass, not only is it super expensive and big, but those lenses are just more designed for, for photos. Yeah. Um, and red does have the, um, Komodo on, uh, on RF, but Mm -hmm. you know, I think, Canon and Red are kind of working together in a lot of ways. So maybe Blackmagic was trying to set themselves apart and then they chose Leica Mount. So yeah, so I'm excited to see what this is going to be. We haven't seen a new Blackmagic camera in many years. Mm -hmm. I think this is a great um, sign that we're going to be probably seeing a full frame Blackmagic camera. I think that would make the most sense to me Mm -hmm. using L Mount as their first kind of endeavor into full frame. We haven't seen any full frame options from Blackmagic. Um, So this will be really exciting to see. Maybe it'll be 8K, maybe it'll be 12K, who knows? I hope it's not 12K. (laughs) No one cares. Just make a, I don't even care, but give me a 6K camera again, actually, but just really spec out the features, make it a box style camera. Come on, Blackmagic, you know what to do. That's right. Now, moving on to our next topic, the Insta360 GO 3. This is not a rumor. It's actually a camera that was announced today. Yeah, it came out this morning, and uh, I know it was announced this morning because there's a bajillion videos in my subscription feed. Yes. Uh, All great people. Even Casey made a video, which is crazy. So we're taking a look at the video of the product right now. If you want to watch the video, whether you're on Spotify or on YouTube, and they've done this before. They've done this tiny little kind of pill shaped GoPro essentially before. The the Go 2, I believe. And it kind of lived in like an AirPods case, I believe, to charge it up. Yeah. But now they've designed it in such a way that the magnetic pill sticks into a little box that is not only a battery pack and a charger, but it has a built-in screen that can also flip up and be a selfie screen. So this is really innovative and really interesting and super versatile for what this tool is used for, which is putting it in random spots all the time. Yeah. So basically you get the flexibility of it being so small and you do get to stick it in a lot of places, but I imagine that it probably doesn't have the best battery life in the world. So being able to put it on the case and still use it almost Mm. like a traditional GoPro, you're right. It's very innovative. In it, innovative, that ooh, innovative, innovative. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> but that's the, you were saying it in the British way. Innovative, yes. <laughs> innovative, uh, in it. Uh, aluminium. Mm, yes, quite. But the yeah, so obviously you know using the tiny little pill shaped, and we're talking about an object that is literally the size of like half the size of a credit card in terms of length, and it's. T- teeny Americans tiny. will use anything but the metric system, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but Isn't that the, what they say? But the battery pack slash screen 
obviously will give you dramatically more battery life. Um, this camera can now shoot up to 2.7K in 30 frames per second, so it's not doing 4K. Is that, go back just a little bit on that little video we were watching. Um, we're kind of watching the this for the first time. Yeah, check it out. So you can use the case as a remote control oh my and you get a live view. So basically what we're looking at right now for our glorious audio listeners, basically there's a little kid who has the pill camera attached to her hat and she's playing in the sand and it looks like the dad or something is off to the side and he's able to use the case as a preview screen and as a start stop recorder mm -hmm. as well and probably setting all the settings and all that stuff. So that's pretty amazing. And he's also using the Vision Pro at the same time. Right, the vision, the Apple. filming his his daughter in 3D with the Vision Pro headset, holding the Insta360, controlling the camera on his kids. Well, hat. it's not 2024 yet, so we don't have to worry <laughs> about that. But no, that's actually a great idea. The fact that the pill uh, object <laughs> syncs to the screen battery pack, which is removable, is quite amazing. And they mentioned here that you get 45 minutes of battery on the pill shaped object. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then you attach it to the Insta360 Go 3 adapter, which is basically, again, the size of a GoPro with the screen built in. And now that jumps you up to 170 minutes of battery life when it's attached. Okay. Very cool. So a little over two hours of battery. Um, that's got, cool. It looks like it's got the, you know, the flow state stabilization, which looks pretty similar to uh, what we've seen before with GoPro, with Insta360. It's weatherproof. Did it say water resistant for the previous thing? It's got the um, horizon lock, water, water resistant. resistant, waterproof. Mm, so, okay, the, so the pill itself is uh, what you would take if you were fully submerged under water. It yeah. looks like if you're just like on a boat or something, you can use the, the actual case itself. Yeah, so the case with all the extra battery is water resistant, but if you want to go diving, um, you can dunk it up to 16 feet with the little pill. Yeah. Double the mics. I wonder if the audio is any good. We'll have to report back. I'm sure it's pretty terrible, but you know, they're Start on that voice isolation and call it a day. But honestly, it's strange to me that GoPro hasn't been innovative like this. Cause yeah, I mean, the quality is not incredible here, but I, th I feel like the use case of this product, even though it's not giving us, you know, 6K or high res 4.6K or 5K, whatever the GoPros can do now. Yeah. Like I don't actually need all that resolution for a GoPro, but this is actually a useful uh, tool here. Yeah. And I, it makes more sense. I think looking at this, like I haven't been excited about a GoPro since the GoPro Hero 3. Um, you know, it's just been kind of whatever. I guess you could say the 7 was pretty cool because it had that really good stabilization, but and it was kind of still whatever. This is actually kind of interesting. I do like this. Now, it is similar in a lot of ways to the previous one, mm -hmm. but the case design and how they function together, I, I'm I'm impressed right now. And I will say the color coming out of this looks really good. I mean, uh, I think we're probably looking at a, a probably a baked in profile here. It looks very contrasty and saturated, but for what this is, you know, filming shots of your kids or GoPro-like shots, I mean, it's fine. It looks yeah. great. Very interesting. Obviously, if you want to watch any r reviews of it, I'm sure there's a thousand videos that you could watch right now. Yeah, probably um, really great videos. Go watch Jevin's video. Give yeah. Jevin some love. Give Jevin Dovey some love. Yeah. So, very cool. Insta360 Go 3. And he made a nice video. Uh, in fact, before we started recording, Jevin called me yeah. and we said hi to him and it was kind of weird because we were watching his video <laughs> and then he called so it's like he knew very cool these products are great i don't have a huge use for them because i don't do that much stuff but <laughs> <laughs> it's cool i do think it's cool it's very cool okay so moving on to our main topic today the canon PowerShot V10. Connor, enlighten us. Tell us all about this product. Well, you know, Dave, um, when this camera, when I first saw this camera, I was like, this thing looks terrible. <laughs> and then when I was, I actually called Zach and I said, hey, dude, we should both buy these things. Zach Mayfield. Zach Mayfield. Previous yeah. host of Kinetika. That's correct. Um, I said, we should both buy one and we should basically just dump on it you yeah. know because it's like this thing's stupid look how dumb this thing is look at us you know reading a book by its cover um and having used it now for a couple days i'm kind of i kind of i kind of like it dave <laughs> <laughs> like i kind of want to keep it now that's awesome so walk me through kind of the specs of it the price point and then definitely you know tell me some of the highlights and pros and cons and so 
I think that this thing is, it really is accomplishing what it's setting out to do. It's setting out to be a non-intrusive, grab-and-go, automatic, slip it in a pocket, backpack, whatever, uh, and just go. Like, it's so quick to just, like, you hit the power button, and then you hit the record button, mm -hmm. and we're going, right? It's like, right. that. It's, it's that quick to get to be able to record, so you're not going to miss your shots. It's able to do 4K uh, up to 30 frames per second. It is doing um, contrast-based autofocus, but it does seem to be working pretty well. It has all of Canon's UI, so it has the touch focus, which is mm -hmm. s still the best. Like it's still, I know. it's still it's the simple. best. Yeah. Um, you do have some other like quick controls and stuff, but one of the things that does bother me about the little PowerShot V10 is that you are stuck to just the picture profiles, and you can't customize them at all. Yeah. So. Typically, if I'm having to shoot in, let's say, a standard picture profile or even a neutral picture profile, which this does not have, it doesn't have neutral, um, I, I'll turn down the contrast and I'll turn down the saturation just so that it gets me just a little extra uh, information to mess with in post-production. Mm -hmm. um, you can't do that on this. It is full standard or you can apply, the, I think they're called story filters in this camera, <laughs> which is hilarious. And just think, just imagine, right? Just imagine 2012 Instagram filters. Yeah. And that's what you're getting uh, on those like orange and teal and green retro and you know, whatever else. Um, and they're terrible. Uh, there's maybe one in there that's halfway usable. Mm -hmm. I think it was it was called like Tasty Blue. I yeah, think. color filters. Yeah, we've got Story Teal and Orange, Story Magenta, Story Blue. We've got Retro Green, Sepia Tone. These are all as bad as you would imagine. And the only one that looks kind of cool is Tasty Cool, but even then it's... It's not the best. It's not good. It's, it's yeah. faded and noisy and terrible. Yeah. So Just give us the standard, the faithful, the neutral, all that stuff. Just give us the, the normal stuff, Canon. What, what's going on? Yeah, I think that they were maybe trying to play into that Fuji, uh, you know, the cool, like, profiles and stuff. But they really missed the mark with that. Um, so that is <laughs> probably a, a decent size negative. It can do 1080p, 60 um, and it does have digital stabilization, which from my testing works pretty well, although mm -hmm. it does crop in when you do that. So keep that in mind. Although it's a 19 millimeter lens as well. So it's equivalent. really equivalent. So it's, it is wide enough that like, even with a crop, you can still hold out your arm far enough to be able to record yourself for that selfie shot. So, nice. um, oh, it has a mic jack. That's amazing for a little, um, point and shoot like this. So yeah. that means that you can... Uh, use a external mic for high quality audio if you're a YouTuber. If you need to, although it does have two mic pickups on the top and they seem to work well enough, you know, for what it is. Because again, like the point of this thing, I think is like, you know, it's the best buy camera. It's the one where your dad goes in and wants to buy a fun camera for his vacation to Italy, right? <laughs> like that's what this is really great for. Honestly, immediately when I saw it, it reminded me so, so much of the camera I had when I was a kid which was those flip cameras. Yeah. Which you remember those, Dave. Of course. I had a lime green one. It was great. I love that thing. You just turn it on, you start recording, and you didn't have to think about anything. And as a kid, I didn't think about much anyways. It takes um, pictures too, which I'm doing right now. It does take pictures. They're JPEG only, so no raw photos. Really? Um, but when you take JPEG photos, I think you can. I think it's like a 5K sensor as a whole, so you take advantage of that at least in the larger capture profile. So the things that I'm, so I've only been able to play with this today when, you know, I came over to Connor's and I saw it and started messing around with it. And one of the things that surprised me is just, I, I really like the, the body and it's a vertical orientation here because it's kind of a, a tall camera and it's just like a flip camera. Right. But it's shooting 16 by nine the way you're holding, you know, it's, it's shooting at a widescreen screen as you're holding it vertically. So unlike a phone, when you're holding your phone vertically, you're shooting vertical. Well, which is the more comfortable way to hold your phone when filming. Yeah. So it is kind of nice. Now they say, which is really funny, they're like, it now it has vertical mode. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Well, all that means is that you can turn it on its side <laughs> and film. Um, you can turn it on its side and it recognizes. Well, the UI doesn't change. So what? I the, the, like they the UI should. doesn't. So unless I'm missing something, which is possible. Um, well, do they mean that 
when you bring it into your editor that it's already vertical? That might be what it is, but it, the the UI itself doesn't change when you hold it um, to shoot in a vertical orientation. Weird. Um, one of the key things about it, though, that's really positive in my eyes is the fact that it has a little kickstand, which is adorable. Yes. Um, and I found myself really enjoying that because you can just set it down anywhere and um, film, and it's robustly built as well so you probably won't be able to see this but just imagine the camera doesn't feel as plasticky as you'd think i mean it yeah. is it is it is but plastic it feels solid yeah so like basically like if i want it to be tilted up tilted up i do that and it's fine it's not falling over mm -hmm. or i can you know tilt it the other way and it's fine so it's kind of interesting um you know what's interesting to me dave is that the screen uh, build quality is better than your C70. <laughs> That's so annoying. You're right. Yeah. It's so solid. It's not going anywhere. It's not. It's a nice flip up screen. It obviously auto rotates when you flip it around. Um, this really is kind of the perfect, just everything you need camera for a, a beginner YouTuber yeah. or content creator. But not only that, maybe even somebody like myself who is always just kind of like wanting the perfect pocket camera to film the kids and mm -hmm. take pictures of the kids this will look better than your phone uh, right well that's the question right i it depends it looks different than your phone <laughs> um that's for sure the thing is is that i hate how iphones look it's all hdr nine times out of ten yeah um but it is doing some pretty amazing stuff when it comes to like the exposure and like being able to expose dark objects and keep the highlights and stuff. This is not going to do that. This will blow out your highlights real quick, right? <laughs> so it's like you kind of have to accept that that's what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. That being said, it still has that it's a camera look versus it's a cell phone look. So in that way, yeah. it does look better. But yeah, I mean, I guess you could, if you want a cell phone that doesn't look like a cell phone, the Sony, you know, was it the Xperia. Xperia 1V looks fantastic, but now you're going to Android. Yeah, and, and you're not on an iPhone, so what's the point of living? So, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think I think what this thing is doing is it's allowing you to separate your camera from your phone, which I actually really like. And I think that's one of the things I like the most about it is I can pop this in my pocket or in my backpack. I have a tiny little pocket on the side of my backpack fits perfect. Yeah, And I could just have this with me at all times. And if I ever need to film something quick, or whatever, because that happens occasionally, and I end up just using my phone. Yeah, and I and I'm not a big fan of that. I could just use this little guy. It takes micro SD cards um, at the bottom, which is fine. Yeah, um, I mean it keeps it small. Keeps it makes small. sense. Yeah, I, the build quality prefer is small. full H SD if possible, but I'm not I'm not mad about that. And um, one of the things that okay, so one of the things that really confuses me about this camera, it's like you can't change the picture profile settings, right? You can't take raw photos, right? But you do get internal ND. That carries over from the G7X, which this is based off which of. Which this is based off of. And you also get aspect ratio markers. All the way down to... 235 by 1. <laughs> I mean, there's so many <laughs> That's options. That's a full cinema uh, you know, frame line. I'm like, why is that in this camera? Like, like you guys, it's like, okay, so there are, you know, all the engineers are like sitting around a table and they're like, what does this camera need? And uh -huh. they're like, someone's like aspect ratio markers. We got to stick that in there. <laughs> Someone thought that. And I don't know why. You suck. Um, it's a little peculiar guy, uh, but it's adorable and I love it. And it's $430. Yeah. A little expensive yeah. for what it is. Two ninety nine would be good. That's exactly the price that I said. I was like, it should be 300 bucks. It will be. It will be. Friday. <laughs> it will be. Wait to buy. Like, if you're like, oh, this camera is kind of cool ish, but I don't want to spend that much money. Just wait. Black. Yeah, you're right. Black Friday, right before Christmas. These things will be two ninety nine. Mm -hmm. And the, and if you're living in a vacuum of Canon, this is kind of your only option at that price point that's giving you all these features. But as soon as you look outside of Canon and look at Sony with the original ZV-1, it's yeah. a much better camera on so many levels. It's uh -huh. got a built-in zoom lens. It's got, you know, even S-Log if you, if you really want it. Although this is not, I don't think this is competing with that in a way, because this is truly different. I think this is almost like, like this, you would buy this for Ryan when he's like, he's like. <laughs> that's my, that's my uh, five-year-old son. <laughs> right. Ryan would be like, if you're like, you know, Ryan, maybe he's seven and he's a little more careful with mm -hmm. stuff and you could be like, hey, Ryan, here's a camera, go have fun. 
Yeah. Right. And it's it's like it's it's child friendly. Like yeah. a kid could use this and it's pretty durable. I think he's gonna bust it up a little bit, but it's like he's not gonna really probably break it. Yeah. This is essentially what I had with my flip camera. It was just a here here you go, son. Have, <laughs> go, you know, make movie. Yeah, you're right. And and even the photo mode, like the here, let me just say this. Canon has the best auto uh settings mm -hmm. i've ever seen as well like the way that it ramps exposure and even white balance and iso and i don't even know if sony has an auto audio setting or panasonic doesn't either that's one thing that annoys me with cam other cameras is like i love that canon has auto audio levels yeah. so you just turn this thing on you don't even think about it mm -hmm. and you start recording and yeah, that's not the right way to do it. You want to have the proper shutter angle and this and that, but that's not the purpose of this. This is literally, you know, that's just how the iPhone works. You turn it on and go. But it does have manual exposure controls. Yeah. So what you could do is you could set the aperture to auto, you could set the ISO to auto, and you can set the ND to auto turn on as well. And then you could leave your shutter at 150th. Oh, cool. And then therefore you would have that proper shutter exposure and then everything else would be auto still. The ND will flip on and off automatically? As needed, yeah. Wow, that's cool. As needed, yeah. That's actually a great feature. Yeah. And you could even probably get an accessory to put an ND on here like through friction if somebody were to make that. Yeah, I was thinking like it. the um, X100V has the um, lens cap that just kind of sticks over top of the lens with that mm -hmm. like felt interior that would kind of work for something like that and you could put like a vnd on it um it would be again it's, it's not the point like people are making cages for this camera i'm like man I, well small rig has a cage that's so that you could put a mic on it you can mount a mic which that i guess that could be maybe a good thing i, I don't know I, I to me again the point of this thing is to not do any of that <laughs> yeah the fact that it's got this little cute little stand is just so great so useful um the like you said the flip screen feels really durable i love that i can do a low angle from behind the camera and then so quickly go into selfie mode anything that removes the friction of filming is so crucial when it comes to being a youtuber um especially the way that vloggers film or the way even we used to film with the reviews and stuff. Yeah. But if you have a professional setup and you have another shooter, you know, this is silly to use, but oh, yeah, that's not for, the, I mean, like if you're considering that for that use and like, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I think the people who are listening to this show are all professional people. Yeah. Who would buy this? Who is listening to our show? I, I think if you, again, wait for the Black Friday sale, um, I'm probably going to return this and wait for that myself to, <laughs> and then I'll buy it myself. I, I think if you're just looking for that camera that doesn't feel so much like work. And for me that, you know, whenever I can finally purchase it, that'll probably be the 100V for photography. Mm -hmm. But for videography, that there's still some not so great parts of it. This could be that camera for you. So it's like, you don't want to bring, you know, your s5 2x and all your lenses and yeah. all that stuff with you but you know you just want to take like a dumb little camera to the beach with you mm -hmm. and just have something that doesn't feel like work because for me whenever i go on like hikes for myself or whatever else i don't want to bring my camera gear and people are always like why aren't you bringing it like yeah. that's kind of your point like that's yeah. the point of bringing you i'm like okay well <laughs> um the point is is just if i bring it it's work now mm -hmm. um and this doesn't have that feeling it, at all it feels fun actually yeah um which is rare um being in this professional it feels like a fun thing that's not just a toy fully it is quite close to a toy it is but it does have a mic jack it does have the ability to shoot in manual and have the auto nd features and stuff um i'm curious to to see your footage and see what it looks like from the tests i've seen it doesn't look super good it doesn't yeah. It does. Um, so that's a little unfortunate. Um, but I think they're on to something with this. If it was a better sensor and had dual pixel autofocus and yeah. better profiles. So it, is, it is just a one inch sensor. So it's like it's kinda like having a like a action camera sensor in there. Yeah. What's well, the G seven X? This is really the upgrade to the G seven X, which which was one of the most popular vlog cameras for years, and I think even still to this day a lot of people use that camera right. to film for YouTube. But that was also in 2015. Yeah. So um, it's kind of still stuck in that era, but it's a nice built-in super, it, it is wider than your normal uh, 
yeah point and shoot the, the 19 lens, right? mil equivalent feels really good actually and you know i think what's going to be interesting is is after a couple months or six months or a year, it's going to be interesting to see how much Canon supports this camera because mm -hmm. there are a few things that are very fixable. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume fixable. I'm not an engineer, but they yeah. seem very fixable through um, firmware, for instance, like just letting me be able to turn down contrast, you yeah, know, just on give us the, the sensor. The plain old normal Canon profiles that have been in every camera. Yeah, I would, I would like those. I mean, you could still leave in those um silly ones silly ones but also maybe just give me an intensity slider too like because i mean it is full bore i mean it's like going to lightroom and just cranking everything to a hundred you know what <laughs> i mean and that is kind of what beginners do when they start to find this stuff mm -hmm. they're like wow look at all the stuff i can apply to things which is fine you know it's part of mm -hmm. learning i mean that's what i did how's the so this camera does not have built-in stabilization at all but it has digital stabe as digital how does it look does it look wobbly and weird or does it get some of the jitter out like kind of looks good it looks good yeah i mean it it does it does what it needs to do i mean i wasn't sprinting full sprinting with it on so maybe i should test that before yeah. i make my video well you shouldn't be doing that but yeah um what about um the battery life how is the battery life on it uh i mean i was using it uh in all 4K. day in 4k uh i do have something to say about 4k actually um i i used it all day and the battery seemed fine like i didn't have to charge it all uh charge it at all um, did not seem to be an issue, but it doesn't have a removable battery. So, maybe, oh wait, what? <laughs> so I didn't know that. So if that's it, a downside, if it does die on you or you forget to charge it, that's a little annoying. It is USB C charging. So you need to carry around if you're going all day. You need to carry around like a phone charger um, yeah, thing. I, those, those little portable batteries. I, I personally don't think it's the biggest deal but it is something to note like you know you're not going to be able to switch out the battery so you do have to plug it into a wall outlet or an anchor battery or something mm -hmm. um so uh when we were filming zach and i you go check out zach's video because i'm assuming he'll he'll have it released by now but um he did have his camera overheat mm -hmm. uh, yes so the difference is we were both shooting in 4k and we were both recording at the same time but his was overheating uh, my theory is, is he was messing around with the smooth skin mode. Okay. I think that probably added a lot of extra processing. Yeah. And therefore increased the heat of the camera. Yeah. And it did overheat. Um, Interesting. Uh, I did not have mine overheat at all. Um, I shouldn't say at all. I did see the overheating warning once, but it mm -hmm. never, it never got to be a problem. And then what about rolling shutter? Do you see some kind of wobble going on with the... Um, I haven't really fully tested rolling shutter yet. i um, doing more 4K. stuff with it. Um, in my test, it, I, I will say this, when I'm looking back at the footage so far, um, it hasn't been like, oh my gosh, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm not like cool. complaining too much about it, but I haven't like specifically uh, done a rolling shutter test. Well, yeah, I think a lot of people who use this camera, who like the actual kind of normal people, not even anybody who listens to this show, they're going to probably just keep it on whatever settings came out of the box, which I would imagine is 1080. I think it is. It'll not be cropped. It probably will have better rolling shutter performance and it probably won't overheat. Yeah. So, but when you go into 4K, that's when you have some of those issues. Uh, but 1080 is good enough for most people, especially for a camera like this. Yeah. And again, like I'm, you know, I, I when I'm done with my video, I'm going to kind of start my review from the perspective of like, professional right mm -hmm. in the sense of like oh, it doesn't have this and it doesn't have that and i don't like those things but then when you really start to just break down what this thing is and who it's for and you come at it from that perspective it's it's great mm -hmm. so let's put a pin on the v10 and say this i was saving this okay there is a rumor that canon is doing another power shot the v100 which will be in the next series which is rumored to have a 24.2 megapixel aps-c sensor Oh, okay. The Digic X image processor, which is their top of the line flagship processor, which this does have. That's in this one, yeah. That's why the autofocus is so freaking good, even though it's contrast based. Right. It tracks well. But this one will have dual pixel autofocus. Interesting. With 4K 30 video, 4K 60 with a crop, HDR PQ, just like the R50. This is probably the R50 sensor. Yeah. Honestly. IBIS, enhanced image stabilization both electronic and stabilized sensor okay. and OIS for video, meaning if you have a, I guess the, if the lens is stabilized as well, uh, face priority auto exposure. Wait, so this is a V100, but it's going to have removable lenses? 
No, it's a built-in lens. I guess the lens has stabilization. So OIS for right. video. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So the lens is separately stabilized. The background defocus mode, which they all have now. It's I so love silly. that. Thank you for adding that. Feed. No one cares. <laughs> well, people who don't know how to adjust cameras, they just push a button. The background looks blurry now, yeah. but it's well, basically I mean, just opening up the That aperture. would be perfect for my mother because I tried explaining aperture to her and she's like, so the which one makes the, the thing blurry? <laughs> and so yeah. there you go. That's exactly why it exists. A uh, movie for close-ups, that's interesting. A uh, vertical movie mode, directional capsule mic and windscreen, so probably similar to that. Mm -hmm. um, no EVF, uh, touchscreen, LCD. Yeah, announcement yeah. Q4 of 2023 or Q1 of 2024. Well, so that's curious because this thing's already, f uh, let's, let's just say, I mean, with tax and all that stuff, it's 500 bucks, let's be honest, right? Mm -hmm. uh, USD. What do you think this thing's going to cost? This V100. It, it would probably be in the um, ZV1 category. So it's like 700, isn't it? Yeah, that might be true. You know, the thing that confuses me about the, yeah. this camera, the V100, if it's actually called the V100, goes against Canon's naming scheme. Because isn't it the bigger the number, the worse the camera? Usually. Yeah. Usually. <laughs> so this is the V10. This should have been the V100. Yeah, someone at so. someone at Canon accidentally wrote down the wrong number of zeros. <laughs> this should be the V100, and if this is true, that should have been the V10. But that also doesn't make any sense. And to a normal person, bigger equals better, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> it, it it was confusing for me as a kid when I was like, so this this the Canon 70D is worse than the 7D. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So that's why they changed it. Yeah, yeah. So I think a lot of the things that you were saying that are issues with this this rumored V100 could kind of solve some of that, you know, getting the dual pixel, the larger sensor, I would imagine with that nicer sensor, I would imagine they would include better picture profiles. I would hope so. Um, it doesn't say anything about a built-in uh, battery compared to removable battery. I would hope you could <laughs> have removable batteries on mm -hmm. this as well. It's kind of like a, a higher end version of this. Well, that if that's true- which, Give me that same stand, that same screen. Yeah, if that's true, then this may be, maybe don't buy this. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the more professional side of things, wait for, wait for this guy. I don't know what the price is going to be. Uh, I still like this little dumb thing, though. I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. Like It's one of those things, again, I saw it on paper. I saw it in the little promotional video, and I was like, that looks so stupid. Uh, yeah. And now I'm here kind of like, ah, do, I, do I return it or do I keep it? You know, And I, I just don't know what I'm going to do yet. Yeah, so we've got the R50 and then the V10. It's a curious conversation because it's not... To, I mean, it is cheaper, yeah. but for two hundred dollars more, or well, no, it's three hundred dollars. I really, you would compare it to the R one hundred, wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess so. Because it's not, yeah. it's not as good as the R fifty in any stretch. Yeah, the R one hundred is an M fifty in a new body, right? Um, which so, and it's the same price essentially. So you're really coming down to: do you take photos, and do you want a small photography camera mm -hmm. R one hundred? Obviously, it's got remote, uh, interchangeable lenses as well. And even if you're filming your your kids and stuff and you want a good travel camera and you're in this price bracket, the the R100 will still be a better camera. Right. Um, that being said, the V10 is a whole new form factor. It's a new thing. Um, I don't know. I think you're just paying the different... I mean, you're not. it's a little cheaper, but essentially what it is is do you want ease of use mm -hmm. or do you want to start your camera journey? Right, the R one hundred is kind of like the, I, you know, you're a kid who doesn't have too much money, and you're maybe just in high school, and you want a camera to start learning camera fundamentals. R one hundred. Yeah. Um, are you just needing something that's easy to use, quick to use for either your kid or for yourself for vacations, or you're a professional but you don't want to feel like you're working? Use your iPhone. <laughs> use your iPhone. Um, and then I still hate filming with my iPhone. Me so too. <laughs> I, I would still pick this if I could over an iPhone. Well, it's it's cool because you could leave your phone in your backpack if you're at the beach and you just have this and you get sand in it and ruin yeah, it. Yeah, you get that disconnect from everything else that's happening because your yeah. phone is still your information box and sometimes you just don't want to see that. And this is nice for and that. And to be honest too, I kind of like the, again, I think, I feel like I'm almost making excuses for Canon here, but I do like w having a real camera and it just, it still looks, it doesn't look that great, but it still looks like a real camera and the way that it blows out highlights. Like I'm okay with highlights being blown out sometimes. And the, the iPhone is just always trying to like 
do this HDR stuff and it just looks so unnatural and so weird. Yeah. Uh, I just, I wish that I could turn all that off and just kind of have like, just give me what the sensor can do. Yeah, um, which probably isn't much on the iPhone sensor. That's why they're yeah, subsidizing be, it with all the AI stuff. It probably looked like the V10. Yeah, well, <laughs> which, it would look worse because this is a one inch sensor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I think the R50 is in a completely different category because it's $679 uh, and it's essentially a mini pro camera in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, the R100 is definitely, yeah, a closer competitor at $479, which is an APS-C censored essentially m50 in an rf body right without a flip screen too so it's got that built-in screen and much back. more like that t2i from, yeah from the before times if you guys remember that here's so are you gonna keep it are you gonna sell it return it well now that i know the other one's coming out i might still return this one and just wait for that one um but i don't know maybe i'll just keep it around too it is fun i, I really enjoy having it around oh other thing huge thing actually Plug it in USB uh, C to your computer. Use it as webcam. Oh, there you go. Yeah, no, no extra software, no box, no nothing. It's just one menu setting that you have to switch inside, which turns your USB from an image transfer to a webcam. Is there a way to mount it built in? That'd be cool. Um, doesn't look no, like it. but it does have a quarter twenty screw on the bottom, so you could probably buy a little dinky accessory yeah. that would um work for that, but. It is cool that that is a thing. Um, that's something that's in my R6 Mark II. And if you really want to get like it. the small rig cage, they worked with Canon to build it. And they even made like these silly little furry windscreens for the microphones, which get in the way of the screen. They do. Ironically, but it does help if you're outside. Um, if you're a professional YouTuber, you probably should do that. Um, Just go David Dobrik method. <laughs> yeah. He pulled it off. Yeah. He became a multi multi millionaire with an ADD and the kit lens with no microphone. Here's what I'll say though, Dave, and I don't know if you agree with me on this. Like, you know, Sony has those four cameras coming out. I'm sure Canon has other cameras coming out, more Lumix cameras, more all this stuff. This is more interesting than all those to me. <laughs> it's more fun. Because it, it's different. Like also, same thing with the Insta360. Um, uh, go 3. Go 3. Thank you. I almost said go 2. Uh, the Go 3. It's it's interesting. It's different. It's like the camera market. It's like we're just, here's another camera that does micro things slightly better. Mm -hmm. Lumix was a little different because they had a monumentous um, change. Yes. Which that was very exciting. It was kind of a, it's about dang time with lumix right but with these other brands like sony um it's like here's another camera that like the color profile change was the big one for them you know when they finally f kind of fixed their color yeah. being awful uh, and now they're great that was a big deal but now it's just here's another camera that's marginally marginally better, better. yeah uh, and there's so many it's like four that they have coming and, out in the next year it's why it's and none of them are there's not a single sony camera that's fun like this not yet. I mean, maybe they'll surprise us. I would love to be surprised. I think that's still why I like Fujifilm because it mm. is doing its own thing. They're more fun. It's kind of like that Leica thing, but just more affordable. Yeah. Leica is kind of that same thing. They're, it's just... Well, Lumix, it's a all blacked out camera with shutter angle and waveforms, all the things we want. Yeah. I mean, that one's still more on the technical side because I feel like that's all things that all the cameras should be giving us anyways. Yeah. Um, I think that it's nice that Lumix doing that for us. I think that's what made that interesting. You're right. But it's like, why is that not just universal? Like, that's so <laughs> yeah. stupid. Um, I just like that it's different. Like, I think that the camera space, you know, especially with phones and they need to be more in a, in a, innovative. Yeah. I don't innovative. know why that's Innov innovative. innovative. The British um, and I think this is maybe accomplishing that. And it sounds like the V100 could be even uh, much better than this. So yeah, totally. I'm looking forward to that. Very cool. So did you have an after show planned? You mentioned. Yeah, I do. Yeah, so, we have time. Um, we'll do a quick little after show. Um, this is just me wanting to talk about a cool thing that I'm going to do. Gear guy. Um, I'm going to get scuba certified. Oh, sick. And so I got a textbook now that I have to read. Um, it's a tiny little, uh, it's called Neptune's World, Exploring Neptune's World. And the uh, author of the book was the owner of the scuba shop in which, downtown Nashville. Which one is him? Is he? Uh, the gentleman on the right. And um, yeah, he's his name is cool, Mr. Dennis, real cool guy. He signed the book. He signed my book, which was hilarious. He was, he, um, you know, I was buying all the stuff signing up for the class and all that stuff. And he was like, well, you want me to sign your book? <laughs> and I was like, sure, I guess. Why not? So he signed it. Looking forward to diving with you. That's yeah. sweet. Yeah, he's just a real nice guy. Um, so cool. I bought a uh, mask and fins, 
snorkel and some uh, wow. wetsuit boots because um, the fins I had got, um, you need to have the boots in order for them to function properly. Well, uh, there's one interesting thing about this whole conversation. Tennessee, the state we live in, is completely landlocked. It's completely landlocked, which I was kind of concerned. I used to, actually, I'm, I'm from Florida, and then I also lived in California, and my dad, my dad is a certified diver. He, you know, grew up in Florida his whole uh, early years. Um, so it's something that I've wanted to do, and I just haven't done. And I was living in Nashville, and I'm like, I guess this is just something I'm not going to be able to do. And sure enough, there's this little scuba shop in Nashville, and it's awesome. Um yeah, so I'm I'm gonna be doing that, and hopefully this goes well. And well, ha- what happens through the process of getting certified? Tell me how that works. So it's actually not too bad to get certified. It's a lot of information. I mean, I have to go through the whole book, and I have to I do have to know my stuff. But basically, it's three days up front. So the first three days are it's all day. So um, the first part of the day is you know in class, textbook learning numbers you know you gotta learn about like how long you can be underwater at certain depths for you know because the different pressures yeah impact the oxygen level how quickly can you come up you know because you can't just you can't just swim straight up because you know your lungs are airbags inside your body so there's a way to do that properly and safely and all that good stuff so you do you do the in-class stuff Mm -hmm. and then on the same days um so for those first three days the second part of the day is going to be uh pool training so he has it. He said he hand built his own pool. So one wow. side of the pool is like all at his house. I don't know. Um, he just so I don't know. We'll, we'll see if I live. Um, <laughs> half of the pool is four foot deep, just straight up. And then he said, and then it's not. A, it doesn't gradually. It just goes straight down to fifteen feet, um, so that wow. you can actually go down to a decent depth to to learn um, how to do that. Damn. So that's the first part. Then the next part you do, um, you have to do four open water dives and we're in Tennessee. So where do you- Yeah, where do you go? Where do you go? Well, apparently you go to quarries and you dive in uh, quarries, so mining quarries that I guess, you know, they don't need to mine them anymore. They fill them up with water. And I've been told um, that these quarries are pretty cool because they essentially turned them into a scuba diver playground. Mm Mm-hmm. So they sunk boats and they put fish in there and they sunk school buses. And um, he said there's a basketball court, a uh, basketball court underwater, but obviously you can't use a basketball underwater because, you know, fill in the blank. You understand how physics work. So you use bowling balls. <laughs> That's amazing. So he's like, it's kind of like a playground. So he says the first day, you know, you have to do four dives. You do them over two days. So it's a uh, dive in the morning and a dive in the afternoon, I guess. Um, he said the first part is kind of just like getting you in the water, kind of, you know, getting used to all that stuff, you know, applying some of your principles. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he said, then the second part is, you know, actually kind of like making sure you, you know your stuff and putting you through the paces, like making things go wrong on purpose oh, wow. to make it kind of like, okay, now what do you do? You know, cause you have to live. And then after all that, um, you take a test, like a full test. It's kind of like, you know, 70 questions or whatever. Yeah. Pass fail. Cool. That's amazing. What, uh, what's the name of the quarry? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah. It's in Kentucky or It's something? somewhere in Kentucky. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, what, so what's the, cool. what's the goal? Are you going to maybe like go to Florida or Cancun or Bahamas or something? I can. Um, I think for me, the goal was just uh, I wanted to do something different and new. And again, my dad's a certified diver. I dove with him once. Um and they make you sit through an entire class for half of the day when you go diving and you're not certified. So I just, it's just something, I don't know. I, I just wanted to do it and I will go diving. I'm sure I'll go yeah. to Florida probably to start just cause that's, you know, an yeah. easy place to start. But what if you get an Insta 360 go three and so go I, when I was watching that video, I was thinking, I was like, shoot, that would be a great little camera actually to, to have on this, yeah. this little scuba journey. So totally. Um, hopefully I pass. Hopefully everything goes okay. Uh, I've spent a lot of money already because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't want to just buy cheap equipment because um, all this stuff will last, you know, decades if yeah. you take care of it. So I was like, well, I might as well buy good stuff. Cool. Um, you gonna film the the journey? You think? Tell the story. I may. Um, it kind of it kind of depends. Um, I would have to get an underwater camera, so mm-hmm. you know, to be able to document it properly. But also, I don't know if they want me filming their course or not. Mm-hmm. You know, because they'd be disruptive or whatever. So just use the Canon V10. Probably work underwater. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll do an underwater test with the V10. Um, 
that'd be great. You could but. use it for the vloggy stuff though. It's so unobtrusive. That's true. Yeah. So I could have that and then I could have the 360 uh, go three underwater for, yeah. it would be a cool setup actually for, for something that you don't want to really think about Yeah. Totally. that. So it's amazing. Yeah. Well, go figure. Everybody comment down below if you're scuba certified and, uh, or if you just want to give Connor some support. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I'd love to do that as well, maybe. Um, sounds a little time consuming and expensive, but it sounds like fun. You're certified for life. That's the thing, though. So it's like, you know, it's a $500 upfront fee for the course, which is, you know, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive. And then the you have to buy certain equipment. They do yeah. rent you uh, for free. They provide the uh, tank and the vest. Um, well, it's and included such like that. in the $500. In, in the course, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so you're still paying for it. But, <laughs> um, uh, but you know, the, the mask and the fins and all that stuff, mm-hmm. it's not really that expensive if you don't want it to be. Uh, again, I just I just went ahead and spent a little more. Yeah, you, you order food and then they deliver it for free. It's great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you have to pay you have to pay twenty dollars for the meal. Right. But they bring it for free. Exactly. Yeah. It's a great deal. <laughs> no, I'm just messing. Dude, that's awesome. I'm really happy for you. I know it's something you've been talking about for a couple of years. So yeah. I'm glad you got it. Too bad you didn't have it when we lived in Laguna, which was literally a well, you could just snorkel out there if you really wanted to. Yeah, I could have. I mean the There's, thing is there was reef where we were. Yeah, but, but it's cold. Yeah, that's true. The Pacific Ocean. We have cold. to get a wetsuit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a whole other thing. And also, I actually did look into it. I went to first when we first moved to Laguna. The first thing I did was I went to a dive shop, mm-hmm. and I was like, ah, oh, you know, I might want to consider doing this. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And I was like, what's like a good place to start diving and learning? And they go, oh, Dana Point would be a great spot. It's like, yeah. oh, cool. They said the only thing about Dana Point is that you know you have to you know great white sharks are in the water, so just you know be mindful of that. And I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 yeah there's a lot of them out there yeah, yeah so it kind of like i i don't know it's it, so normal like we we worked with some of the guys at polar pro and they would go surfing and they were like yeah there was a bunch of great white whites out there today it's yeah. like you're out there surfing with them yeah like i want a scuba but i don't want to like scuba with just great whites I, I would scuba with some sharks like a lemon shark sure or you know whatever um you know but i'm not i'm not out there trying to go like hey tiger shark let's hang out dude All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us again for another episode of the Golden Hour podcast. Leave a comment down below if you're watching the video and uh, leave a rating and review on iTunes, Spotify. I really appreciate that. And yeah, everybody be on the lookout for the V100 coming Q4 2023 (laughs) from Canon. Um, Thanks for enlightening us on the V10, Connor. Yeah, you're welcome. We appreciate you guys. Hope you all have a fantastic week and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.